Hello everyone! This video will be a more in-depth look on how to balance complex chemical equations using the algebraic method. I will also be proving that with this method, any variable can be used. You'll see what I mean in a few moments, so stick around. Once you have mastered this method, it will be way easier and faster than using the guess and check method. If you haven't watched my first video, it doesn't matter, because I will go through all of the steps again in this one. I will be writing everything down so that you can follow along. Try doing this first exercise on your own. The first step in solving chemical equations using the algebraic method is that we are going to write out the symbols for the elements off to the side. Then. We will assign a variable on top of each chemical formula. Always put an equal sign on top of the chemical equation's arrow. This will help us write an algebraic equation later. Now, write out the variables off to the opposite side. To write out the algebraic equation, look for how many moles of each element are present per chemical formula for each variable. On the reactants side, we have two moles of nitrogen to which we assigned the A variable, so we write it as 2A. Then we go over to the products side of the chemical equation and do the same thing. Since we are moving to the products side of the chemical equation and we go over the yield arrow, we must write it as an equal sign. It's important to note that every time that we go over to one side of the equation, the arrow will always be the equal sign. On the products side, we have two moles of nitrogen also. So we write the number of moles and the variable assigned, in this case, B. For oxygen, we have five moles in A. So that's 5A equals 4B. Since there is more than one chemical compound on the product's side, we have to take that into account. We will write the plus sign as well, since we are dealing with two different chemical compounds containing oxygen. There are two moles of oxygen in C, plus 2C. We have successfully written out our algebraic equations. Now we are going to solve them to get the coefficients needed to have a proper balanced equation. To link these equations together and solve them, we must assign one of these three variables the value of 1. Why 1? Because 1 is the lowest coefficient that we can have. Before assigning any variable the coefficient of 1, first look at your written equations. Always choose the easiest looking equation to do this. It will make your life a whole lot easier. I am going to choose the top equation because there is less math involved. At this point, I can assign the coefficient of 1 to either the A or B variable and it will yield the same results. I am going to choose A. From here on out, we just substitute the variable in the equations. We have 2 times 1 equals 2B. Now we solve for B. Isolate the variable by dividing each term by 2 and simplify. Cancel the common factor of 2. Then 2 divided by 2 is 1. So B equals 1. Write this provisional coefficient to the ones we wrote off to the side. I say provisional because it can change later. You'll see what I mean. Since we now have the A and B variables representing a number, we can now substitute them in to solve for our last missing variable, C. Substituting the variables, we get 5 times 1 equals 4 times 1 plus 2C. Now solve for C. 5 equals 4 plus 2C. Isolate the variable by subtracting 4 on each side. Now we have 1 equals 2C. 
Divide each term by 2, canceling the common factor of 2. We get c equals 1 half. Write 1 half for the c variable. Since we need whole integers for the coefficients, we must get rid of the fraction by multiplying each term by the value of the denominator in the fraction. Remember to always do this for all of the variables. Multiplying the fraction by its denominator will cancel it out and give us a whole integer. In this case, c now equals 1, b now equals 2 because we multiplied the provisional coefficient by 2. Same thing applies for a. We are done now. These values are our new coefficients, which we will write out in the chemical equation to have it balanced. You don't have to do this step, but I will prove to you that our equation is now balanced. We have taken the guess out of the guess and check method and will only be checking for balanced formulas. So write out the elements in a table. On the reactants side, we have a coefficient of 2 times 2 moles of nitrogen, which gives us a total of 4 moles of nitrogen on the reactants side. On the products side, we also have a coefficient of 2 times 2 moles of nitrogen, giving us 4 moles total of nitrogen. It's balanced. Check. For oxygen on the reactant side, we have the coefficient of 2 times 5 moles of oxygen, giving us a total of 10 moles of oxygen. Moving on to the products side of the equation, we have a coefficient of 2 times 4 moles of oxygen, giving us 8 total moles of oxygen. Since there is one more term with oxygen in this equation, we will add those moles too. This term has a coefficient of 1 times 2 moles of oxygen, giving us a total of 2 moles. Writing this down, we have 8 moles plus 2 moles of oxygen, giving us a grand total of 10 moles. The equation is balanced. Check. As you can see, with this method, we don't have to guess if our equation is balanced or not. Now, I'm going to prove that you can assign any other variable the value of 1, and we will still get the exact same answer. I'm going to write everything out if you haven't gotten it down fully yet. You can stay to watch me proving that the method works, or you can skip ahead to the next formula.
Try solving this equation on your own using the algebraic method you just learned. I'm going to go a bit faster this time around. I have decided to use b as the variable I am going to assign the value of 1. I chose b because looking at my written formulas, I can see that it's alone and I can get the value for a. Again, remember that you can assign any variable the value of 1 and you will still get the same results. I just try to choose the easiest looking formulas that will, in my opinion, give me the least amount of mathematic work to do. Since in this chemical equation we have every element present in the reactant side, to solve for our missing variable, we can choose any of the other two algebraic equations that we wrote and would still get the same answer. I will prove to you what I mean. Again, I decide to start out with the easiest equation. Substituting the variable, I get that C equals 2. Maybe you chose the other equation. So let's solve for C. Substituting the variable A and dividing by 2, we also get that C equals 2. I hope that I have shown you enough proof that it doesn't matter which equation you choose to solve, you will always get the same answer. Now that we have our coefficients and none of them are fractions, we can simply write them out in our chemical equation. Again, I am just going to prove that assigning any other variable the value of 1 will once again yield the same results. If we assign c the value of 1 and solve for the other variables, we get that b equals 1 half and a also equals 1 half. Now don't panic. As we learned before, we can't have fractions as coefficients and need whole integers. So we multiply everything by the common denominator. Multiplying every variable by 2 we can eliminate the fractions and have our final coefficients be 1, 1, and 2. You can stick around to see me prove to you again that changing the variable assigned the value of 1 will not change our final results. Or you can skip ahead to the next chemical equation which will have 4 variables. Try solving this equation using everything that you have learned so far in this video. Step 1. Write the elements off to the side. Step 2. Assign each chemical formula a variable. Step 3. Write the variables off to the side. Step 4. Build your algebraic equations for each element. This is mapping out the proportions of the elements per chemical formula in the entire chemical equation. Step 5. Look at the number of moles for each element. If there is not a number written as a subscript, that means that the element has only one mole in that chemical formula. Step 6. The number of moles per element are linked to the variable assigned per chemical formula. Step 7. Take a step back and look at all the algebraic equations you wrote. Determine which equations require the least amount of math to be solved. Step 8. Once you have settled on the algebraic formula you're going to start solving, assign one of the variables present in that equation the value of 1. Step 9. Solve for your missing variables. Step 10. If your missing variables are present in various algebraic equations, stick to the easiest looking one. Step 11. Write all your answers for each variable on the side. Step 12. 
if any provisional coefficient is a fraction, multiply all of the variables by the common denominator to cancel the fractions and get integers. Step 13. Your final integer results are the coefficients that you will write up in your now balanced chemical equation. Step 14. If you still don't believe me, you can always check the number of elemental moles per side to confirm that your chemical equation is appropriately balanced. Step 15. Pat yourself on the back for a job well done. As always, the rest of the video will just be me proving that it does not matter which variable you decide to assign the value of 1 to start solving all of your algebraic equations. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, it helps a lot.